Hello, welcome to Kate's Egg. Today I'm here with... My name is Lasse Vesterby and I'm one of the founders of Stauning Whiskey, a Danish whiskey distillery located on the, on the west coast of Denmark, of west coast of Jutland. This is very exciting. I'm very interested in learning about the distilling process and everything that goes into it. Could you tell me a little bit about your history? Yeah, and I also go into the, the process, but I think it'll be better when we walk around and see the distillery. Yes. But the history of Stowning Whiskey is actually, it started back in 2005 just as a hobby. Nine friends and family tr decided to, it could be fun to see if we can make a Danish whiskey. So actually uh, three kilometers in that direction where my uh, parents are living, we started the first testing in a, a small butchery. My dad is an old butcher. Uh, so that's where we did the first testing, mashing, and very small distilling. And well, that turned out pretty good. Uh, so we had the appetite for trying something more. And then we bought this place where we sit now, an old farmhouse, and we renovated and made it ready for uh, making a distillery. It's still very small. And actually you can see these are some of the, the pot still we used in here. So from 2009 until 2018, this is actually the room, the location where we did distilling. We did floor malting just on the upper side of that wall, and then all the mashing and distilling in this room here. Wow, that is a great story. Oh, thank you, it is. And that is also a, a big part, actually, of the story of Stowning is that we just started out with, out of curiosity, could we make high quality whiskey here in Denmark using local ingredients. We work together with two local farmers who grow both the, the rye and the barley that we are using. Our story of curiosity and just trying to do something is, uh, is definitely a big part of the Stowning Whiskey story. That's really neat. And how many whiskeys do you produce? Well, we have three core whiskeys at the moment, and then we also have some research. We have our rye, which uh, the majority of the uh, grain obviously is rye, uh, all malted. All the grain we're using here in Stowning has all been, been malted. I'll show you that uh, later on. And then we have a, a smoke, uh, that's a single malt whiskey, when in the drying process of the of the malting, we add, we burn some heather and some peat, add a, a smoky flavor to it. And then we have our chaos, and that is a, a, a product which is actually a combination of our non-smoked single malt, our smoked single malt, and the rye whiskey, all in one bottle. And then we have some research series. We have an El Clasico, which is a rye whiskey on the vermouth cask, and we have an, a, a Bastard, uh, also a rye whiskey aged on a uh, mezcal cask. And then you can see around the shop here, we have a lot of different distillery editions. You can only buy here at distillery, we'll be trying different cask finishes, etc. That all sounds very nice. Well, it is very interesting. And we can see that people who are visiting us, they, they like the, that they are able to taste different types of stout whiskey. So we don't have just this one single flavor. We're not only just a smoked whiskey and not only just a rye whiskey. We have the different variations so okay. that also it means that a lot of people, they can find a style and a type of whiskey that they like, but at the same time, there still is a stounding style, and that gets back to the small pot stills, the direct fire under, under the stills, the, how we do the floor malting, etc. And a quality product. It has to be a quality product, because maybe you can sell a bottle of whiskey based on a good story once, but when you bring it home, and if it doesn't taste good, you'll never sell the second bottle. And also because of curiosity and the pride in the product we are doing, we, high quality is, is the, the definitely a, a goal for us and high priority. Yes, very true. And could you tell me a little bit about your background and how you were educated about whiskey? Well, actually, that's a, another part of the fun story of Stowning Whiskey, that the nine founders of Stowning Whiskey, they actually didn't knew, and we didn't know anything about making whiskey. Uh, me, myself, I uh, educated as a construction engineer, uh, and three of the other founders I met on when I studied for engineering. Then we have a, a helicopter pilot, we have a, a doctor, a chef, <laughs> a butcher, and a teacher. So nothing in uh, actually relevant for making whiskey. So it's all based on curiosity, and then just 
try to research and try to experiment and try to learn it on our own. But I also think that has been one of the, the beneficial part of where we are today because we didn't have a lot of knowledge, we didn't have a lot of tradition of making whiskey in Denmark. So we could just do what we thought was right and not do what people normally do. And that's also what, when you see our distillery and how we make whiskey, it's very different from what you see in all other distillers around the world because we just make whiskey the way we felt like making whiskey and make the style of whiskey that we want to do and not just do something like everybody else is doing. And I think that's the most important part is to be different and differentiate yourself in the marketplace and um, not coming from a whiskey background allowed you to become more creative, yes. which is just awesome. Yeah, it definitely allowed us to, yeah, to think of, of new uh, way of making whiskey also you were going to see some equipment that we invented ourselves and actually now other distilleries are copying the way we do floor mulching and copying the equipment we're doing because they can really? see oh that's actually quite a nice way you can go back to do floor mulching like we did in the old days without using a shovel so some of the equipment over there we know that we have had different visitors from other distilleries who are now planning on installing that kind so that's that's for us that's kind of funny that nine guys not knowing anything about whiskey have invented together with local uh, craftsmen uh, equipment that is now being installed in different distilleries. That's kind of nice. Yes, that's an absolutely fantastic story. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. Thank you very much. Well, welcome to our floor malting area. This is where we do all the floor malting of both the rye and the barley that we use for making a stouting whiskey. We have four floors, so we make four bats of grain uh, of malt every week. Uh, both rye and, uh, and barley, depending on which variant of whiskey we are making. And at the moment, we're making our rye whiskey, so that means that we need to malt both rye and barley, and we're going to do that until late fall or something like that. So is this both rye and barley? No, this, uh, we, we use one grain at the floor each time, and then okay. it's been uh, mixed up later on in the mashing process. So right now on the floor, we have rye, actually because of summer, people on vacation, so we are not uh, actively malting right at the moment, but we have the grain to lay here to visualize what it actually looks like. So the process here when we do the floor malting is that uh, normally when you do uh, malting, you start the steeping process. You add a lot of water to the grain, normally in big steeping vessels. Yes. But here in Stowning, because as, yeah, we, like I told you earlier, we do things quite differently because that has been a better solution for us. So actually we add the water in the steeping process when the grain is on the floor. And oh, uh, yeah. okay. So we have just added, if you look at this piece of equipment over here, this is our, we call it a grain turning machinery. But on this, we actually added some spray nozzle. So this is the water system. So the first 24 hours, this equipment goes back and forth and just spray water on the grain while this is rotating and turning the grain. So we get an even ab uh, absorption of, uh, of moist. So we reached about 44% of moist content in the grain. Uh, because it needs the water to start to grow and start to germinate. And then after the first 24 hours, approximately, then the germination starts and the grain starts to grow. But, and uh, when the grain is growing, it uh, develops uh, some heat, so it increases in temperature, so we need to turn it to keep the temperature down. And we also have, you can feel it's a little cool, nice chilly in this yes. uh, uh, room. That's because we need to have the temperature in general in this room down for about 17, 18 degrees. We have some cooling hoses in the floor, so we can also extract some of the heat through the floor out, because if it gets too warm during germination, it, it, it damages the enzymes that we are creating, and it also ends up just being bad. So it needs to be kept at a, at a lower temperature in the beginning 20, hopefully. And this goes back and forth for the next four days. Turning, really? keeping the temperature down, uh, preventing all the roots, because when the grain is starting to grow, it also roots is coming out, and if it just lays there, it's tangled into each other. But getting turned by this, it, it doesn't grow together. And uh, so that's uh, how germination and floor malting. Floor malting, how you did in the old days, but then you used a shovel by turning and you got to <laughs> hurt your back. And that's why we invented this piece of equipment so we can turn it automatically. But we need to monitor it every day because we can't just say you need to go every second hour because just a little change in room temperature, a little change in the, in the thickness of the layer, little change in the moist constant, 
then it developed uh, differently from the last time. We do a lot of uh, measurement of moist content and a lot of measurement of, uh, of temperature and looking at the grain, how far have they grown so we know where we are in the process. Should this go a little more often, a little longer time between goes, should it have a little more water, etc. So it's, it's the guys operating this floor malting area they need to manage very closely to have a good product in here. And a very technical process. Yes, it, it's, well, it's kind of simple, but it takes skills to know what to do when to get the best germination and best malting uh, possible. Uh, because after the germination is finished, because if, if it keeps growing too far, then it starts to use the sugar that we want to use for making alcohol. So we need to dry it down to stop the growing process. And this is the, that's the next step in, uh, in floor malting. We're going to move the grain after germination, actually with this simple shovel, <laughs> driving into the to the grain and put it into that uh, stainless steel uh, equipment over there and then by a screw uh, conveyor it's moved into the kiln where we add some heat blowing hot air through it to dry it down and it's also in the kiln you can see that later on where we add the the smoky flavor to it if we want to make our smoked malt then that's where we burn some heather and peat outside and then blow that smoky air through the grain and add the, the smoky flavor oh okay yeah. That's very interesting. And so the floor malting, would that be in replacement of a malting drum? So I'm familiar with a malting drum. Yes, normally today it's often a big drum or big saloon boxes, a more of a commercial and a more efficient way. But for us, when we started both back in the butchery and, and over in the farmhouse, floor malting for us was the way that it was possible for us with very simple solutions to set up and do our own malting because for us, it's very important that we are able to use local ingredients that we want to make a, a Danish single malt whiskey, make yes. a Danish whiskey, and we can't buy a, a Danish smoked malt. So, well, we have to make it ourselves. And then we just kept true to what we did in the farmhouse and, and uh, copied the same principle o over here. So we kept being using local products and doing our floor malting. I think it's amazing how you've really taken malting back to um, its original state and form because traditionally the way they started doing malting must have been worked very well. Yeah, uh, yeah, and I think that's the uh, thing about Starling is that we actually we are kind of a modern distillery but we are making whiskey kind of old school and you're also going to see that in our pot stills. We have very small copper pot stills, direct fire. Nobody else is pretty much using that because it's a lot of work and there's a lot of pot stills to clean but in terms of, of flavor, both the small stills and the direct fire is just so important. So in general, yeah, we're making whiskey like you did in the old days, but instead of breaking our back and working too hard, we invented the piece of equipment that made it necessary for us to make whiskey in that way that we want to make whiskey in Stowning. That's really neat. Yeah, thank you. So, well, this is where we yeah, put in the finished germination of the barley or the rye into this piece of equipment. Then we have a screw conveyor moving the grain into the two kilns we have. Uh, so. If you follow me, this is kiln number two, and I think it's a little more light in, in kiln number one. You can see that's where the, the grain from the floor has been moved into, and it lays in a 45 uh, or 50 centimeters uh, thickness. It's very important that the thickness of the bed, it's called a bed in here, is the same because then the air f going through is going to be even all over the, in the kiln. Because if it's a little more shallow in one end, that's going to dry faster and then all of the, uh, the air going through is going to keep going through in that end and then it takes too long time to dry the grain in the other end. So it's very important that we have an even, even layer in here. And that's actually also our own invention, those pieces of equipment you see in here, the, the conveyor belt and there's a scraper that puts it down on a screw conveyor going across because it, it's just so important that we don't stand in there again doing a lot of hard work when we can invent our own solution of actually distributing it, it uh, very nicely in here. And this is also where when we add, the, when we make our smoked whiskey, so we have a full basement underneath of here and then outside we burn some heather and some peat and then in the beginning of the drying process, pretty much in the first 12-16 hours, we add this smoky uh, air going through and that smoke uh, adds the flavor to the grain and then after the 12 or 14 hours, we start the actual drying process. But then we have the smoky flavor, the phenols, as now in the grain and that end up in the bottle. So we had got this smoky flavor when we make our oh, smoky okay. whiskey. That makes sense. Yeah. And also, for us, it's being, uh, we have had the privilege of being able to build both a malting and a distillery from scratch. So you can really think into uh, uh, reusing energy and environmental uh, 
take considerations. So that's also why we have two kilns because then we can reuse a lot of the energy uh, from one kiln to the other. So if this kiln is almost dry, the air going through still have a lot of drying capacity. Then we fit that with the very wet grain from the second floor going into the second kiln and then we can reuse that air going underneath the second kiln. And when we get later on in the process, then this is completely dry, we can empty it. The second kiln that's kind of dry, a lot of drying capacity when the air going through that. And then we fill some new wet grain in here and reverse the airflow so we can reuse it again. So there's a lot of consideration of how to we use a lot of energy. Distilling is uh, energy consumption, but we try to reuse as much as possible to use as little energy as possible. So I that's think that's fantastic that you have such a large emphasis on sustainability and the environmental factors of distilling. Well, you, you have to have today, and also when we had the, the chance of, and uh, again, the privilege of being able to build from scratch, it would just be stupid not to have that in your consideration when designing when you're malting and distilling. Yes. Yeah. So that's the kiln, that's the drying process. Your facility is incredible. Oh, thank you.